Hey, this is Chris Plush, and in this video we're going to talk about Boolean subtraction. A lot of things can go wrong with Boolean modifiers, especially when you're using them to create multiple holes in a surface, and when they work right, you can still end up with some really bad shading issues. So I'm going to give you a few tips on getting better results. In this example here, I've got kind of a turbo booster here, and I want to make a bunch of circle cutouts going around the rim of it. So I made these cylinder cutouts right here. And these are all part of the same object and it's going into the surface and I want to subtract these from the booster. So let me hide these again real quick. And let me select the booster and I'll add in a boolean modifier. And it's already set to difference so now we'll just load in the cutouts as the object. And instant failure. Especially when your cutout object has multiple separate meshes that you're trying to cut out, this result can happen a lot. But the fix for it is pretty easy. We just need to change the solver over here to fast. And that's a little bit better, but as you can see, we're still missing a couple of holes now. So to fix this, we'll go into the solver options here and turn the overlap threshold down to zero. And there we go. Another solution would be to simply move the booster or the cutout object slightly in any direction. Sometimes all it takes is moving an object a pixel to get a different calculation that actually works out. This modifier is a little touchy like that. And again, especially since the cutout object has multiple meshes we're cutting out of the surface, more can go wrong. And I don't really know anything about the solver type or what the overlap threshold does. I just find that in these circumstances, the fast solver with an overlap threshold of zero seems to work the best. Now, there's two other incredibly common and frustrating shading issues though. First, our surface around the holes actually seems to look pretty good. But if I switch over to a different matcap, you'll notice we do have quite a few artifacts around the surface. Especially down here, like right here and up in the corner here. And that's because the surface around the holes is actually pretty low poly still. So we just need more geometry there to get a better result. So if I were to crank up the subsurf levels over here and then check out the shading, you can see it's much better, almost perfect. And now last up, something a bit more tricky. So we fixed the shading around the holes, but the shading inside is still looking pretty terrible. Now the cylinders I used for the cutouts are smooth shaded as you can see, but the insides of these cutouts here almost look like they're flat shaded. And that's because all of these faces going down into the holes are actually angons, and that's because of these extra edges connecting to them at the rim. And this is creating some really bad shading at the rim, and this shading is extending down through the length of the entire cutout. So how do we stop this? Because we can't edit the inside of the hole or edit the topology around the rim without applying modifiers first. One thing we can do though is edit the cutout object. Because the boolean modifier uses topology of the cutout object itself to create the holes, then we can modify the cutout's topology to help us fix this problem. So what we're going to do is edit the cylinders and place an extra control loop inside the cylinders right below the booster's surface. And this extra edge loop will contain the bad shading to the rim area instead of letting it travel all the way down through the hole. And this is going to make things look a lot better in the end. Alright, so let's do it. The first thing I'll do is disable the boolean modifier for now so we have a solid surface. And now let me unhide the cutouts and I'll select these and tab in. Now we want our control loops to be aligned with the surface which is slanted, so the first thing I'll do is snap the outside vertices to the surface to get them aligned. So here's what I'll do. With all of the front vertices selected, I'll go into front view and in solid shaded view so I can see the surface. And up in the snapping menu here, I'll enable face project so we can project these onto the surface behind them. And also enable project individual elements so every individual vertex snaps onto the surface. And now I'll press G and then hold control to activate snapping and then press enter. And now all of these are aligned with the surface. And now what we need to do is push these into the surface a little bit to act as a control loop right underneath the surface. But we still need these to poke outside of the surface too so we can actually make a cut. So what I'll do is just extrude these on the Y axis out of the surface like that so we have a control loop on the inside but it still pokes through. Alright, so this is ready to go. So let me tab out and let me hide these. I'll select the booster and re-enable the boolean modifier. And there we go. Now the insides of these cutouts are totally smooth like they should be. And that's because if I switch over to wireframe, 
you can see that the insides of these cutouts now have those extra control loops that we added in. So these extra control loops are containing any bad shading near the rim closer to the rim so it doesn't extend all the way down through the cutout. It's not perfect as you can see, there are still some artifacts around the rim if you zoom in, but it's definitely good enough for many circumstances and it prevents you from having to apply the modifiers to fix topology. All right, and that does it for that. And there's some other basic tips as well, like instead of using smooth shading, which is gonna give you really weird shading around your sharper angles, you'll often wanna use auto smooth instead. And also one more thing, your cutout objects don't always need to be enclosed. Like my cylinders here are open-ended on both sides and everything works out just fine. That being said, if you run into any trouble with bullions, try enclosing your cutouts because it does seem to make a difference sometimes. All right, and that's it. And these are just a few of the countless tips and techniques in my new car creation course. So if you wanna learn a lot more and support my training too, then go check out 3D Cars Inside and Out. The links are in the description. And that'll do it for this video, so I'll see you in the next one.